Welcome everyone, it is season 2022. My name is Tony Neal and I'm joined by Sean Jackson. How are you, Sean? Good, thanks, Cowboy. How are you, mate? Absolutely sensational, mate. What an off season. Six months we've been waiting. I'll tell you what, how many football club reunions do you go to? Fair dinkum. You, you, how do we fit this into our schedule this year, mate? You've got grand final reunions, past club reunions. It is fantastic to have you on board, mate, because this season, hasn't it been interesting? The amount of coaches that have changed, the names. Social media has blown up with the amount of names coming into our league, mate. It is fair dink, and I say this with all sincerity, it's one of the most exciting times that I've seen for the league in a long, long time. Yeah, I'm certainly excited about some of the names that have come out of the SANFL, and traditionally they've, they've permeated into Division 1. What we're seeing this yeah. year is some players that are coming into Div 2, all the way through to Div 4, straight out of the SANFL. So that can only enhance our competitions for sure, Tony. Really looking forward to that. And Sean, in the next couple of weeks, we're uh, probably going to put you under the grill a little bit because I'd love your expertise on, is it going to change the way that we've seen football played in the Adelaide Football League over the last few years, it's been pretty good intensity. We see Glenunga out there training at the moment and a bloke almost got cleaned up there a moment ago and uh, she's pretty hot in the kitchen. And I just think this influx of players in is going to improve the whole league, oh, no surely. Question. No question about that, yeah. Well, we're all going to be toey, aren't we? We've oh. been sitting on our hands. AFL kicks off next Wednesday night, first game. Someone said to me today, what do you think about that? I said, fantastic. Start the middle of the week next Wednesday, we're into footy, you beauty, grand final replay. We're still three weeks away here in the Adelaide Footy League, of course, but yeah, you, you only got to look at the trial game out here tonight, the internal. Oh. Skins and shirts. Yeah. Now, yeah, the Footy Club, let's be honest, are one of the wealthiest clubs in Adelaide. Oh. And they can't afford to give them a set of Guernseys. Different I colours. haven't seen skins and shirts for 20 years. I'll tell you what I've loved, the last few weeks driving around, and as we can see here tonight, you drive past the ovals, the goalposts are up, the lawn's been mowed, and the white lines are starting to be marked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Football well. is back, Sean, so uh, I'll tell you what, folks, we've got a chock-a-block show, and we've got a chock-a-block season. Lots of news and topics to discuss this year, Sean, and you're going to be a very big part of it, along with myself, and a couple of others. Just a quick note. We sacked anyone friend. from last year? Oh, not that I'm aware right, of. Right, oh, we should have. I reckon we should not have moved a couple on. I don't, know. But, I don't know how we're still here, to be honest with but you. Just very quickly, to all those uh, people out there that do know, uh, our great friend Peter Walsh has been going through uh, a little bit of strife, let's say. Peter, to yourself, from all of us here at the, uh, what are we called? Between yep. the Posts? Yeah. No, <laughs> Between the Posts. Uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. We support you, mate, and we want to get you back out here doing some of these interviews as well. The professional. That's it. The consummate professional. We're off to a short break, Sean, and we have got some great news coming up for the show for the rest of tonight. All right, don't go anywhere, folks. Welcome back, folks. I've been told off in the break. They reckon I was moving too much in the first segment. Maybe like a dancer. Look, I went to see Ice House last night, got to be honest with you, and it's still buzzing with me. But anyway, on to footy, because that's what we're here for. Tone, it's been a fair bit happening around the league, mate. What do you got for us? Well, I'm going to come to that, Sean, but I'm going to say we are one metre yes. from standing each other I'm getting cussed. just in the forward and back <laughs> pocket here. So it's no wonder you're moving, mate. The itchy toes are out and about. But let's talk about... Some of these clubs in, and we cover, you know, 67, 68 odd clubs here. Smithfield. Oh yeah, it's terrible what's happened out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they uh, they were almost up and running, and our hearts pour out. And I can remember coaching against them a couple of years back. I'll just take you through the atmosphere out there. When you're at Smithfield, you fear from, for your life. No, no, no. From from the coaches' boxes, from that wing all the way around the flank and the pocket is three or four deep 
with deck chairs and good, good people's support. Yeah. It is. It is a whole atmosphere. It's almost that country atmosphere. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, look, they weren't doing so well financially. However, they invited us all back after the game. The hospitality by the Northern Clubs has been sensational. So on a serious note, we uh, we hope Smithfield can get up and going. Yeah. Love to see them back in the league up and going in 2023. So that's our... Uh, well, the ladies played last year and they, they, I don't think they're also able to participate this year. So no senior. Okay. But the good news is the junior side of the club is still running. Good. So I think they'd be thinking that... Uh, you know, they can hang on to those juniors and they'll evolve into being senior players and they can get the senior club back. Yeah, going. so hopefully they can get up and go and they'll, they'll have some good people out there trying. Now, the next one is we interviewed last year a couple of young up-and-comers, really liked them, and Ross Trevor were playing Paynham Norwood Union and it was Stefan Lanzoni and Max Hodges. Yes. Before the game, interviewed them both. Young Max just couldn't stop smiling. Yes. He's a happy chappy and it's so good to see both of these young players, Sean, going out of the league, but they're going to the Sanford clubs. Yeah, really. And they're both at Norwood, sorry. Yeah, really pleased. Max played a couple of games last year for the Crows top That's up, correct. isn't he, in the SAFL. Yep. So it's always nice to see lads use that as a stepping stone, and he's done that, now he's now at Norwood. I don't know if you saw the story recently, there was 12 ex-Ross Trevor kids playing at uh, Norwood this year, yep. and Pierce Seymour was another interesting one. Of course, played at Paynham only two years ago. He's been at Woodville West Torrens. And he has also now moved to Norwood. So okay. really strong yep. Ross Trevor College connection there. Yep. Well, I think as a young Nash was there and he's at the West Coast now. So they've lost one and yes. gained a few. But we keep an eye on a lot of the lads that come out of the league. And uh, good luck to those lads or any of them, really, that are, that are trialling again with uh, Sample Club. So uh, listen, tonight was interesting. You and I had a really good chat with, uh, I think there's three or four interviews that we've got coming up. The people here at Glenunga have been very open and welcome with us, and there's yeah, some really no interesting... No drinks, though. I haven't had a no, drink. No, no. food. Well, Thanks, Rocky. Have a look at where we are, mate. So uh, <laughs> go dig a hole in, by the tree <laughs> there. You're starting to get a bit hungry, that's all. Division 1, Glenunga are up there. Yes. It's not just a matter of getting there, it's staying there, because they've done the hard yards. If you want a template, five years, and they're up here in Division 1. So yeah. fantastic effort by Glenunga. Well, now... Go yeah. on, Sean. Well, I was going to say, when I was speaking to Ben Stapleton earlier, and we talked about their last five years, and it was Premiership, Premiership, Premiership. Three in a row. Year, yep. 20, they finished bottom, and it didn't matter. They I come up that. the next year, and they play in the grand final. So <laughs> yeah, their yeah. timing is uh, yeah. fantastic. And they could be on their way this year, so uh, 10 teams. Now, a couple of new sponsors this year, folks. Wait for this one, Sean. I had a look. Do yourself a favour. Yes. I borrowed that from someone. Yes. It's called Roll the Dice Racing. www.rollthedice.com.au. It's an opportunity to invest in a syndicate, but the horses on there are absolutely outstanding. Well, so if you want to spend a little bit. You've only got to look out here on the oval. Uh, Tommy Javor is oh, umpiring the night, the yeah. B-grade coach. I think he's involved in the syndicate Gitra with Gary McIntosh and a heap of the pain and people. And haven't they done well? Doing very of course, well. Of course, our boss, Johnny Douglas, is also involved heavily in the horse racing syndicate. Doesn't mind a bit of a punt. We've got to be careful with being on the punt, but I did notice they both rolled up in Rolls Royces tonight. So uh, yep. battle of the Rolls Royces a bit later around the oval. But roll the dice racing, get hold of it, because absolutely fantastic if you're interested. Sean, something up your alley? Yes. Going by the colour of the shoes there, of course, sponsored by them as well. Simon Black Academy, mate. Back Tell us on, a little bit about back it. Back on board again, the great man, Blackie, Fantastic. is he? Fantastic. Oh. What do they do, Sean? Well, we educate young kids first year out of school. It's a three-pillared program. It's about education, so we're linked with the Torrens University. They do a diploma in sports management. They also work on their football skills and their personal development. So, fantastic course. Anyone who's unsure what to do after leaving year 12, Instead of having a gap year, get yourself out at the Simon Black Academy. It's an experience that you will never forget. Fantastic, Sean. Thanks so much. So we do thank our sponsors. We're going to mention a couple more a bit later on. And uh, thanks everyone else out there for supporting us. We'll be right back after Spot this break. Hi 
Hi folks, well here we are at Glenunga's pre-season and I'm joined by Alex Haran, part of the leadership group down at Glenunga and uh, Alex we've got you out of the sprints, we can just see in the background now the team meeting and they're about to have a bit of a game and you've got out of the warm up and that, how's the body going to hold up do you think? Yeah I think he'll be alright, um, just taking my time with the interview here so I can miss out on the warm up but I'll get back to the fun stuff, so yes. it should be good. And uh, look we've spoken a fair bit about Glenunga, a lot of success, how long have you been at the club? Uh, this will be my fifth season, came across in 2018. At the yes. So I don't know if yep. I've got math right there. Four, four or five. Four or five. Yeah. How yeah. many premierships yep. have you played in? That's probably the two, best question. Two premierships. Two, two premierships. Two of the three we've won recently. Yeah, yeah wow. So uh, very good, mate. And we can see why you're part of the leadership. I've seen you play, mate, in a beautiful, neat, crisp left foot that you've got. Mate, success breeds success. Uh, a great time to be here at the club with the premierships. What position do you play? I uh, generally run through the middle, um, is my spot to play. If I need to rest back or forward, I do, but try to try to stick in the middle. All right, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about leadership. So as one of the leaders, you probably need to be in the middle more than out and around the flanks. Would that be correct? Yeah, I'd say so. I think we've got leaders on every line, though. I know the back yep. line's always pretty talkative, and forwards like to chat and talk about goals and stuff. I don't know what happens down the forward line, but... Yeah, I think all, all over the field we've got some pretty good leaders and senior players, so yep. yeah. And uh, a successful club, so talk us a little bit about the leadership methods and, and how you might, uh, how often do you have your meetings, uh, what might you discuss within those meetings, is it strong and vocal, does everyone have a say, how do you go about your leadership methods first yeah, of all? Yeah, I think as a club we're, we're pretty good in letting, have, letting everyone have a say, so I know I'm probably not the loudest guy in the world, but we like to let everyone have a say and get involved. Um, we probably had a lot of our leadership come from past captains like Andy Reid and Sam Abel who's, who's, who are still out here playing, yep. so lean on them a lot for, for knowledge and information as well. So. Um, I think overall it's a really well-led club and probably starts at the top with Naif allowing other coaches to, to have their say and we do the same as players, I think. And distributing the message, obviously the leadership group gets together and we talked last year with a couple of clubs about this and everyone's got something different. Do you distribute the message like face-to-face? -face? Do you have a meeting at training? Do you go on social media? How do you actually distribute the message that you want to get across? Yeah, social media is probably not too much serious stuff we talk about. The stuff there probably can't can't get shown but um, yeah I think look, a lot of media like we catch up a fair bit as, as a whole and even last week um, we just came together with a group of 60 of us and has sat down and had a chat but I think a lot of it comes from yeah getting out there on field and chatting there sort of thing so all right let's talk about game day leadership yeah uh, we're on field you're under pressure I know it was only eight points last year at three-quarter time in the grand final unfortunately old he's got up but uh, but just talk us about that when things aren't going so well and you're under pressure, uh, who makes the decisions, number one? Uh, and let's talk about player movement. Is it done snap right there on the ground or do you have to wait for the coach? No, I think it's something that we got better at as we've gone along with Nath as coach is making decisions sort of when we need to rather than the waiting. I know early in the year we are probably guilty a little bit of waiting for a quarter time or a half time break to make changes, whereas now we're sort of come together pretty well and I think we've got enough senior players and um, guys that know what they're doing to, to make calls out in the field if we need to. So yeah, I think it gets led, led from everyone. So trust is a big part of it, uh, rotations yep. of players. Obviously things like ball movement, you've got a game plan, so speed, do your tempo, do your switch, things like that as well. You're yeah. allowed to make decisions on. We had a few commentators last year of our game saying we're a bit boring, but we thought it went pretty well. So um, I don't know. We probably just start with starts with defence and we, we go from there. So um, that's not necessarily playing defensively, but it's all about pressure at the ball and turning the ball over and giving ourselves the best chance to score. So. Um, yeah, heard a few comments last year about yeah. game style, but it seemed to work. So Don't listen uh, to the external <laughs> noise, mate, and be careful. Don't tell us too much because you're in Division 1 this year and the other clubs will be watching and listening, trust me. Uh, final question, mate. You're, you're a fantastic player. You've had success out here. Great time to be at the club. Your legacy. Talk about your legacy. What do you think they'll be saying about you at the reunions? What would you like them to be <laughs> saying or what do you think they'll be saying about you when you get together for your for your premiership reunions yeah, down the track? Yeah, probably being, I like to think I'm still fairly young at 25, so I haven't thought about it too much, but you never know, I might retire soon. But oh, Div 1 flag, scoop. I'll retire, I reckon. Um, but no, I don't know, just as a group, probably um, it would be great to just be remembered for, 
I don't know, we're a great group of individuals that have come together as a team. I think we've got a lot of really unique guys and um, I think we all celebrate that. So it'd be great to, great to be known as that. And yeah, hopefully a few reunions coming up in years to come, so. All right, well, fantastic. Uh, get an insight to one of the new clubs in Division One, Alex. We wish you all the best for the season ahead, mate. And we'll be keeping an eye on things, as I'm sure many others will be. Yeah, looking, Best of wishes for the rest of the season. Looking forward to it. Thanks for coming out. Thank Cheers. you very much, Alex. We're lucky enough to be here for the, to watch training of one of the newly promoted Division One football clubs, and that of course is Glenunga. Lucky enough to be joined by their senior coach, Nathan Griner. How are you, Nathan? Yeah, I'm well, and thanks for coming out tonight. And I know the boys get a bit excited when they, they see a camera around. And um, no, the boys have been super actually, ready for games now, like all teams. And uh, yeah, this will be our last sort of main uh, scratch mat type session here tonight at Moriata and uh, we're lucky to not have a cricket pitch in the middle of the oval here so we can uh, play some 18 on 18 and yeah and we'll pick some teams for next week out of that. You are, what's, what's the tie up with the school here mate? It's not really close to your oval as such is it? Yeah I think the thing, you know, our club's a really big club within a really big presence in the eastern suburbs. I think we've got something like seven or eight hundred juniors and obviously our senior team and our senior women's teams now and like all clubs, ground availability is really difficult. Sure. Uh, at Webb Oval, we've got cricket uh, and athletics, which we share with the council, and uh, we, we get our fair share on that oval, but we try and lighten the load in pre-season. We come out here, um, we get the full ground, we get to play match play, and um, our juniors also play some home games here, which is great that even though the school's actually getting uh, knocked down to re redevelop, we're able to still uh, train here, which is great. Tell us about the pre-season, mate. How are you looking? Confident? Yeah, well, going up to Div 1 is going to be a challenge, absolutely. Yeah, sure. uh, I, I, you, know, you don't want to be negative in your approach, but reality is, say, we'll say one of the two promoted teams will find it difficult, and we're hell-bent on making sure that's not us. Um, lost five or six you know, good players last year, five premiership players, and uh, Mike Wunke retired as well. We had a couple oh, okay. of guys go in the state, but uh, we've picked up three or four quality lads. Um, the challenge, I think, for all clubs in recruiting is, unless you're an old scholar with your, your guys coming home or your junior club, or you have strong links, it is difficult to bring in uh, top level players. Yeah. We, we're lucky enough to bring in Sam Smith, who was at Sturt, uh, who I had a connection with from my time there, and his brother Zach played. Sam's come off two full ACL reconstructions. He would have been a very good sample league player, no doubt. Played four games of league footy and two reserves over the last three years. So, okay, we look forward to seeing Yeah, he's going to be a super get. And we, I just would love to see Sam get a good run with injury. He moved down from Darwin to play him at Sturt and never got that opportunity. And uh, I'd love to see him back at that level. but. The impact he's making on our club's been enormous. Um, he's the only guy that's come in with, with league experience. Um, Tom Bilby comes back after a year off footy and a year at uh, Tea Tree Gully before that. Yeah. Um, and Luke Holly and a lad I coached in Melbourne who's only played a handful of reserves games over the last couple of years, but has played some senior footy in the past in the, a strong Melbourne comp. We feel he'll be an, a solid senior player at this level, but yeah, we're gonna have to rely heavily on, on the growth of our players. And they've, they've been super through pre-season and um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how far we can go. Yeah. What's your knowledge of the history of the footy club, mate? When was the last time? I know it's been a long time, but I'm not sure people realise how long it's been since Glenunga was in Division 1. Yeah, I know it was back in the 80s, and I think we've only ever been up into Division 1 uh, once previously in our history. And it's, um, it's such a, a challenge when you go to Div 1 because, you know, we've come up off losing a grand final. So mm. obviously we, we didn't get to celebrate that, and now yeah. we're going to the toughest league in in Adelaide, but you know, you know that that next crack of the grand final, you know, it could be a little way off. But as we said, we're hell bent on becoming a strong Div One team, one of the biggest junior clubs in the state. Um, you know, and and we feel that we we can actually set up off field and you know, with everything we do and our coaching and our and our administration that we can survive it at Div One level. Um, and we're just yeah excited for our young guys that can play now against. You know, you look at the PAC team, you know, I think 10 yeah. or 12 ex AFL sample type guys. Yeah. It's going to be just great for, you know, we had 20 guys debut last year and you know, no 20 teenagers play and 10 teenagers in our prelim. Like, we'll soon find out if they can play or yeah. not. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's exciting for the club and I'm really confident we can, we can go well. Well, no pressure, mate, but the last time Glenunga came back in Division 1 was that they won the Division 2 Premiership in 77, came back in, came up in Division 1 in 78. And played in the grand final. Okay, no pressure. So no pressure. But I'm okay. going to leave you with this one because I know you've got an interesting yep. trial to have a look at. Yeah, yeah. Dave Pittman. Yep. 
I know Rocky Butterworth has a lot to do with what's going on at this footy club, but Dave Pittman, what's the story there, mate? Do you still have the same relationship that Brian Lees has and that he sits on one side and you sit <laughs> on the other? What's his official role? Nah, no official role, but yeah, great man. Uh, Pitto had a big influence on me coming to the club. I've got a great relationship with him, along with our president, Ben Stapleton, his wife, Shelley. I said, Rocky, that's done a great job. Um, you know, our whole uh, footy committee and, and people in general, it's just a great club to be part of. Pitto hates getting the recognition. And, yeah, that's why yeah, I... Yeah, and when people hear you know, Dave Pittman's name involved, they always think, you know, they think the worst or they think we're doing, you know, what we're doing here and asking questions. But reality is, if you go through our team last year, you know, we had a couple of guys we recruited that played some sample reserves. We, we brought up a bunch of kids. Mm. Uh, we played 45 guys. As I said, we had 10 teenagers in our prelim team. We feel we're doing it the right way. And if, if there's a good player that comes along and they want to play at Glenungo, I'm sure we'll be able to fit them into our cap at some stage <laughs> because the reality is we've only got two or three guys on our list that have played state league footy. Right. Uh, and Macca played, I think, five years ago, and Tom Langford played about six years ago. So, yeah, it's going to be a great test for our guys. And, um, yeah, we, we, as I said, we, we can't wait for this year. And I think you guys have us in a round two against the yeah. Peters. So yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to see that See if one. that smile's still on my face that day. <laughs> but, um, no, um, thanks for the support uh, this, you know, again this year. Last time I chatted to you guys, we lost the grand final and, you know, it was pretty tough. But it's just great exposure for our guys and to be able to stream live local footy for their parents and their family. And we've got interstate guys. It's, it is much appreciated. So thanks for the continued support of our league. It's appreciated. Good on you, Nath. Good luck for the year, mate. Thanks, guys. We Cheers. look forward to seeing you play. Hey, Hi guys, well we're joined here by the president of the Glenunga Football Club, Ben Stapleton. Welcome Ben. Thank you. Thanks it's a pleasure to, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on mate because uh, success through the years with Glenunga and I've got them written down. Division 5 2017 Premiership, Division 4 2018 Premiership, Division 3 2019 Premiership. We had the nine rounds in 2020, runner up last year 2021. Uh, mate, that's the past. We're in the present. You've worked up five divisions to get to Division One, which is sensational. How are you going to stay there? It's a it's a million dollar question. It's it's going to be tough. We're under no illusions about that. I think there's a few things. I think we've we've got a really stable, good back office, you know, off field good. setup, um, which gives stability to the coaching group, playing group. We've got a really uh, tight knit playing group. Uh, you know, very stable, low turnover. Uh, and really close-knit group. We've also um, put a lot more effort this year into conditioning, so the, the boys have been doing a lot of hard work, gym work, uh, and I think just another year under Nathan, Beachy and Courtney um, from, a, from a structure and system point of view should hold us in good stead. I think you know, we played plenty of youngsters, as Nathan said, yep. we, uh, we played plenty of you know, under-18 boys last year, and I think another year of development uh, yeah, it's going to take a bit of luck as well, but um, yeah, we're up for the challenge. And a few of them out running around there tonight. We were just watching a young 15-year-old player having a shot at goal and a uh, uh, very uh, good player by the looks of it coming through. So we've talked about the past and the present. Let's talk about the future. What's yep. the vision and getting that consistency for the club? So it's an interesting one. I think there's, you know, some of the pressures for, for us revolve around facilities and oval uh, access, yep. the, you know, the size of the junior program. Uh, and just really, I guess, creating a really good you know, club environment. We've got a great facility out at Glenunga, but you know, we, we, are, we do envy you know, many other clubs where you've got that sort of homely field club environment. So we're doing a bit of work around some draft master planning, engaging with council and the other sporting clubs in the area to see if we can sort of look to progress that and, and build that over time. Um, I think the other thing in terms of consistency for the future you know, with that junior connection, we've, we really want to build that really strong senior, junior, you know, one club environment. Yep. And last year was great. Nathan really encouraged the, the seniors to get involved with the juniors. They came out, they coached, they supported um, training. Uh, you know, they ran um, Anzac Day sort of sessions with a couple of our army guys. So, you know, I think that, that connection really builds, um, builds a strong club. And just talking on that, the juniors, we were mentioning before, yep. uh, not so long back, 
there wasn't really a lot of junior teams and now or players and now there's like literally hundreds yep. do you know how many all up in total oh, it's, well, it's, it's it's roughly 750 plus wow. Oz kick which is you know at another hundred on top of that so yep. uh, yeah the the girls program 11 or 12 Next um, thing, girls yep. girls in that program uh, but you know really really strong great environment uh, yeah we're really lucky to have a, a, a great junior program and um, just talking about that the ovals I know uh, I think they had the drainage fixed up there a couple of years ago and I can remember coaching there 95 96 my parents came over and my parents were so happy. There used to be an old wood, open wood fire in the club rooms, and they yeah. sat inside for the whole time because you got the new earth facility a while back. But now, really, the ground is heaving under the amount of, uh, or the volume of teams trying to play there, and you've got the women up and going. Yeah. So we know we're up here at Mori Alta High tonight. This yeah. is one of the grounds. Yeah. So the footprint's sort of spread around a little bit at the moment. Yeah, we work pretty hard to have strong relationships with the local schools, so, yeah, you know, it sort of varies year Good. to year, but we, you know, we we tend to use another three or four full oval grounds to be able to cope with the yeah you know, those older junior grades uh, to make sure that we've got you know decent facilities for them to play. Um, schools are great, and yeah, you know, we'll continue to build strong relationships with the schools. It's good, isn't it? It's going to encourage more players to come out. Little Billy goes to school at yep. this school, plays footy out here, and come out to the club. Yep. Uh, talk about off field now, because really that's your forte. And how do we measure success? off the field because uh, whatever you're doing, it's working on field yeah. and of course the off field has to mirror that. It, it does, we've actually just been through sort of redoing our you know, strategic plan, so pretty timely. Yeah, I think one of the key things for us is retention. So you know, yeah. we want to make sure that we are able to retain the, the kids as they come through, especially in the older age groups, 15, 16, 17s, and then be able to uh, move into the senior program. That's really going to be the, the longer term strength Beautiful. of the club. Yes. So yeah, retention is a key thing. Volunteer workforce, I think, is, a, is another thing which all clubs are challenged by. We're no different. Um, yeah, that, that puts lots of pressure on, on yep. the volunteers, but you know we do it because we love it. Um, so there are probably a couple of things that we really, really focus on. And Ben, of course, uh, round two, we've got the live stream with Dartfish, uh, Glenunga versus St. Peter's. That will be a huge game. Uh, club sponsors. Yep. Clubs don't go anywhere without sponsors. Have you got a couple that you'd like to mention? Yeah, I've got probably uh, yeah, a couple. I'll, uh, I'll list off. Ophir um, uh, have been a fantastic sponsor for a long time. Yep. PNR Electrical, uh, James Threadgold Jewelers, um, Revel Sports, my Physio SA's come on to take our physio and training services this year right. and the Alma and the Alcabar and Expert Data Cabling, so more than just a couple there but some, some really loyal sponsors that have been and stuck with us for, for a number of years and yeah, we, we want to repay that. Well you're all riding that uh, all together aren't you, that success yeah. and, and you're up where you belong, you can only get there through hard work and it's a, it's a credit to yourself and, and the people around you and the club and the coaches and so on so listen we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the year, we wish you all the best for the rest of the season. Thanks so much for joining us Ben. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Well, there you go, Glenunga. They're right next to us here, Sean. We're in a little bit of danger, but uh, you're on the inside, so I'm okay. Three right, interviews. So I hope we enjoyed the uh, three interviews there. And wasn't it outstanding to hear a little bit more about Glenunga? Oh, they're up and about, aren't they? Hey, their history over the last five years is pretty spectacular. They expect to play finals this year, so we look forward to watching them unfold as the season goes. 
And just a little thing, I know you interviewed the coach. Uh, a little story of what happened to me yesterday. I was just out and about as I am in between mm. uh, meetings mm. and I ran into a player that I'd coached 25 years ago and hadn't spoken to him for 25 years, but the importance of relationship building as a coach, I know a lot of coaches talk about it, went up, introduced myself, g'day mate, how you going, blah, blah, blah. He'd, we'd been together at a Sample club for a couple of years. He played at uh, Goodwood Saints. He then moved across to Adelaide Uni, had some success. You might have coached him, we'll cover that a bit later. I won't mention the names, but it's so important. And I, I spoke to him, met his wife and so on. And uh, 25 years later, and it was like a couple of hours, you know, just gone like that. It was fantastic. So the importance of these relationships, often talk about this, Sean, when you see a player that you've coached in the past, uh, coming towards you, are they going to drop their head Ooh. and walk across the road? If or you drop them, they do. Or are they, they going to run come, across the road? Or are they so. going to come towards you and shake your hand? <laughs> so your legacy as a coach is very important. So I wanted to talk about that relationship. Okay, so I didn't realise we're going down this path. Um, it's an interesting, an interesting topic because the reality is, uh, the longer you coach, the more people you are, you upset. That's the truth of the deal. Is that I mean, you talking in general? Yeah, well, probably. I mean, if you think you, if you think coaching is a popularity game, you're kidding yourself. And I know that's the way that the warm, fuzzy feeling we have at the moment. But unless you're prepared to make some hard calls as a coach, you're not going to be successful. And I think that's what happens a little bit in the modern world. We think everyone's got to be feeling good about themselves all the time. And as a coach, I, I don't subscribe to that philosophy. Philosophy. I, I think you need to keep players on edge a little bit. And if everyone, if everyone at your footy club's happy, where are you? You're on the bottom of the ladder. So it depends. If you want to be a happy bottom club, everyone will be happy. But if you want to be a club that's contending, there are going to be a few people who get their noses out of joint, Tony. Because you can't fit 25 into 21, can you, Sean? So, so just for the coaches, relationships are important, whichever oh, sure. way you go and think about your legacy. But uh, at the end of this discussion, Sean, I guess good cop, bad cop, uh, he thanked me for coming up and having a chat. So that was good. He was one I never had to drop, though, so I'm going right. <laughs> to put that in. Um, listen, a couple of more of our sponsors for the year, Dartfish. Now, of course, uh, many of the clubs are using Dartfish. Uh, all clubs have access to Dartfish uh, Footy Live to edit their own footage throughout the year. Division One clubs have access to fully statted player and team stats each week, imagine that when you were coaching. Well, I all said, connected division. Sorry. Yeah, I've said to a few people that what's happened with uh, the the unveiling of all this fantastic technology is the coaches' time spent on footy has yep. grown exponentially over the last few years. I mean, the resource is second to none. To be able to show players vision, be able to cut it up the way you want to see it is a fantastic coaching tool. Um, I just feel sorry for all the coaches up there who. Uh, Probably aren't getting too much sleep during the season anymore. Well, there's a great article, and I kept it from a couple of years ago, uh, of an AFL player. He wasn't understanding what was being written on the wall and couldn't work it out, go out on the ground, wasn't in the right position. Strength and conditioning guy just happened to wander out with his tablet and film a bit of it, pulled him aside, played it to him. Guess what? Picked it up straight away. I should be there, I should be here. So people learn differently. You don't all yeah. learn by putting it up on a whiteboard and so on, reading it on on bits of paper, yep. sometimes it's through the footage and the film footage that uh, that gets the message across. So very important. Of course, the other one here, filming footy that Sean has on the jacket here, live stream and match day filming specialist. But wait for this, not only the A grade, clubs have the option to film earlier games and also record behind the goal footage. Unbelievable. Where are we getting all these cameras from? Not our question to ask, Sean. <laughs> we just turn up and do it. So folks, a couple of more sponsors there. We'll have a short break, time to go out and have a cuppa, and we'll come back with our final segment, Sean. The Simon Black Academy is a three-pillared program that combines both education and Australian rules football. Available in four states throughout Australia, the program covers three key areas. The first is an education component through the Torrens University. The second is the development of the participants' AFL skills, helping the player to become the best player they can possibly be. And the third is a leadership and growth program. The Academy is a perfect opportunity for participants who like football, 
they get exposed to AFL coaches and mentoring opportunities as they do their university degree. The first 12 months allows participants to complete a diploma in Sports Management Elite, and if the students elect to stay on for a further two years, they can complete a Bachelor's in Business Management with a sports focus. Based down at Norwood Oval and the Ark at Campbelltown, it is a fantastic program for anyone interested in sports management who loves football and wants to extend their education with a Torrens University degree. Feel free to check out the website, simonblack.com.au. Hey, Phil and Footy back, you beauty! What are we doing in here, Sean? Oh, this is, well, in case you don't know, folks, this is our van we do a lot of our filming from on Saturdays. So if you see this van parked at your ground, there's a couple of things you need to know. Inside, we're commentating and calling the game out in the oval, so we need a little bit of quiet around that. But oh. more importantly, good commentators rely on two things, food and drink. Don't be frightened to get it to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is sensational. Uh, most of the grounds will take this out. Some of the Division One grounds can host us and so on, so it is fantastic. Mate, uh, just on that point, yes. Adelaide Football League, seven divisions, Wow. Through the men's, first of all. Then the C division goes from Division 1 to Division 8. Women's, six divisions. We are in for a veritable feast of footy in 2022. Just on finishing, a couple more sponsors. Sports Interactive, creating better players, one coach at a time. And the boss is here tonight watching us, Sean. Johnny Douglas. Oh. Ventured over from... Uh... Victoria, now yes. tell us this. I love this one, Archie Songs. How many pairs have you got? I haven't got them all. Lambo's got them all. Oh, mate. Lambo, bring some thongs back, will you, mate? Archie's terrific. And they're the best thongs. They are. They're not just a thongs. pair of thongs. They've got no. the arch in them. I know it sounds funny, Archie Songs. But they are the most comfortable pair of thongs. We're talking about the thongs you wear on your feet, Tony. I've been wearing them wrong for all this yes. time. Yes. <laughs> no, they're our game giveaways. And of course, our great friends at the Mosley Bar and Grill, oh, Sean. Yes, Lukey Donaldson, the quack quack. Thanks Fantastic. for having us again. Now, Sean, there's a little bit of a special event. We're about to sign off. We would like to thank all the viewers over the years that have supported us. Sometimes we get good, sometimes bad reviews. We're not here for reviews. We're here to bring football We're here for good and reviews. stories. We've got some great content coming up over the next few weeks. What number show is it, Sean? This is, believe it or not, number... 50. We've made it. You beauty. And I'll tell you what, that's how exciting things are going. The ambulance is gliding by. One, one last thing for me, Tony. Go on. Registrations are really down at the moment across all the clubs. Is that right? And so there's a little bit of concern from the league at they're going to be a mad rush in the last week and the computer, new computer system will break down. So you're sitting at home and you're contemplating playing and you haven't made your mind up. Make your mind up. There are a few clubs, Salisbury's one in particular, and the Northern Suburbs are desperately looking for players. So uh, if you're out that way and you're not sure where to play, hook up Salisbury. They'll be, they'd love to have you on board. And more importantly, if you're already committed, get your registration done so it takes a bit of pressure off. Very well said, Sean. Now, uh, on finishing, mate, you're looking fantastic. You've just trimmed down on the off-season. Fantastic. Skinny I've jacket. practiced a little bit of the intermittent fasting myself. Yes. On and off. What does this say, Sean? Here. Between the posts. So between the posts is what you've been watching. We hope you've enjoyed the first show. It can only get better from here because uh, <laughs> no. this is our starting point, of course. <laughs> but uh, no, that was sensational. You have been watching Between the Posts.